So my name is, is Mark Lynn and I have my colleague here, uh, Lorraine Boran, with us. We are, with the D-STEP, as you'll see, developing staff to enhance programmes. And this particular project is highlighted as the psychology discipline. Um, and <clears throat> looking at the project team, uh, they're, they're all up there in, in their glory. We, uh, we've managed to escape for the day to give the presentations. They're back at base, and Lorraine has to return to base for exam board meetings and meeting external examiners. So I think we've got the, the better deal out of today, as both have been uh, grilled by, by external examiners. Um, so uh, each one of the people there within the panel brings their own uh, necessary expertise to this, this project. And uh, again, just a quick summary of our project partners. Um, from an advisor group, you may remember from our initial presentation, this pro project is devo uh, divided into strands. We have an assessment strand, a curriculum design strand, a content development, and indeed a peer assess uh, assisted learning. We've already had strong input from Sussex and, and uh, Arizona. We've had David from Sussex has already came over and, and um, managed to give us a, a, a workshop throughout the time. And we're working then with the likes of Patrick in, in Waterford and uh, Fiona in, in Manute and so on, just so we get, we touch base with those and, and make sure we're on the right track. It's not just very DCU centric. So <clears throat> when we first made this pre a presentation and, we, and in front of the group, when we pitched this project, we sold it in the direction of gamification of a program. That's, that's the way we sold it. We sold the end product, the, the destination rather than the journey. And part of the feedback we got, and thank you very much for this, part of the feedback was, well, remember, this is a CPD project. This isn't about changing a program. This is a professional development of staff. Uh, and, and that was our own fault in how we sold the project. We concentrate, as I say, on the final, direct, uh, the final destination. But if I take, for example, uh, if you want to gamify, introduce a small element of gamification to your um, to your students, and for example, you want to uh, give the students uh, learning choices, different learning pathways. Well, you need to do a workshop on curriculum design. You need to do a workshop on how to take advantage, in the case of Moodle, which is our learning management system, how to do activity completions and how to do restricted access and so on. And so to do one element, automatically the participants had to do at least three workshops. Um, <clears throat> and it is the journey along the way, and the powerful thing about this journey is, albeit we were concentrating on our, our core team, but we couldn't, they couldn't take the knowledge out of their heads once they had it. It was concentrated on this particular program where we identified an issue, but they taught on several programs, and that's where we've seen the advantage. So our mistake um, in the first time was to concentrate on the final destination rather than the journey to go with it. Now, that's not to say we've moved away from gamification, but it is just to, to uh, illustrate the, the, that we've been paying attention to the feedback, essentially, that, that we received. The second bit of feedback that, that we had um, <coughs> orientated around, well, we don't want it just for one programme, we don't want it just for one team, we want to expand it to a much larger, a larger audience. So we went from looking at our CPD requirements of one team to a much larger audience. We went from one school to now across three different faculties. We have the Institute of Education, we have the Science and Health, Science Support and Health, <coughs> we have the, the Business School, and indeed we have our distance education people in there. So again, that was an element of uh, taking on board the feedback that we got from our staff, or from this panel, excuse me. The challenge that that puts in, how we, we went from upgrading a small number, and no pun intended with the, 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 the gamification, uh, we, we wanted to upgrade our uh, staff from a small team to now being literally four times the size of our target audience. Um, and how do we achieve, sticking in the spirit of, of uh, gamification, how do we achieve mastery at the various different workshops and, and elements that we want to do? And while at the same time building these teaching communities, building the comfortable relationships uh, that we wanted. So, <clears throat> that was the challenge and taking on board the feedback that we received from, uh, from yourselves. The solution, well, we began literally by going back to, to, to the basics, going back to our communities of practice, but instead of, of just one particular community, we ended up creating four 
uh, different ones based on your feedback but also what it allowed us to do then we got a brand new audience to come from so we had to take in all of their requirements all of their current level and as you can appreciate it's the same with everybody in this room people come to these projects with different levels of competence and confidence when it comes to, to using these things so um, the solution we, we uh, focused on was building teaching, uh, teaching groups and communities orientated around those four different faculties, or sorry, three different faculties, and then try to bring them, uh, overlap them uh, through the, the central team. Alignment is key in what we do, and we believe this project is, is very tightly aligned to the national framework, the, the national forum, I should have put in the, the full title, National Forum Professional Development Framework. Uh, specifically, we look to align our workshops, and I'll show you an example on the next slide, but we look to align our workshops based on the focus groups, based on the information coming back from the staff, this is what we need um, focus, or this is what we need workshops on, and identifying as well the student support needs, because we felt the student voice is incredibly important here. We looked at the surveys coming back from the staff. We've ran focus groups. One of our colleagues has run focus groups with <coughs> students, and we're in the process of running focus groups with staff at the moment. And we wanted to align it with the professional development companies. And as I say, I'll, I'll show you a specific example in a second. And then what we wanted to do was to look at our staff who are attending these workshops, look at our staff, and actually build them, encourage them to develop teaching portfolios. Um, and link it to the teaching portfolios. And also what we did, and I must thank Letter Kenny, I don't see them here just yet, I know they're presenting later on in the day, um, as, as one of the benefits we had of meeting two weeks ago, or at least my colleagues uh, meeting two weeks ago, was uh, we ended up sharing resources, and in the case of Letter Kenny's project, it was great. They had a survey which they were putting out to their staff. Uh, we've then taken this survey, and that will allow us then to throw that out to our staff, but also do a cross comparison between institutions um, and essentially not reinventing the wheel. And that's again where we not only aligned with the professional development framework, but aligned with what other projects are doing. And I hope to over the next two months we've identified from that speed dating process, uh, we've identified two other projects that we wish to uh, align with and to say this is what it's all key for for us. Um, so looking specifically at what, what um, we have done or will be doing, and I've uh, put up this, and I do appreciate the slide is a bit, I go away from the microphone there, so um, here we have on, on this side we have the competencies of one of the elements, the professional communication, uh, but what we have broken it down into 3.1, 3.2 and so on and so forth. Here's all of our outputs, so whether they are teaching groups, curriculum design workshops, assessment and feedback workshops, each of the strands that we were doing, and then how they are aligned directly to the uh, framework. So we spent a lot of time making sure that there was that connection there in what we're doing, because like I'm in this game 10 years at this stage and you can come up with a whole load of things and you could easily populate a program to, to uh, inform staff but we wanted to make sure we were, as I say, everything we wanted to do was aligned with the funding and aligned with the framework. The, uh, now this is only one element of it, the numbers here that I'm producing down the bottom uh, encapsulate where we mapped it to every single element on the framework. So for example, if we look at the dissemination uh, aspect, we 10 different touch points on the framework um, related to, to dissemination or indeed if we look at the, the uh, curriculum design workshops that we, we've identified, we've 16 different touch points on the framework, albeit only three on this particular element and so on. So again, trying to make sure everything we're doing to develop staff fits into the bigger picture. And here's what I was promising here now. So here's one of the workshops, a descriptor from what it is going to be. And, and just for your own information, Loop is our internal name for our VLE, which is called Moodle. Um, and again, this is a class example of where we want to gamify stuff. That's our final destination. They had to go and learn how to use Moodle first. They had to go and learn how to create the, the reusable learning object. In this case, uh, in, in Moodle parlance, it's what's called a lesson. Uh, functionality but we highlighted and what we wanted to do is each time when we're advertising these workshops and when we're working with staff we want to introduce this language into the general dialogue and that's 
that's a challenge for us because like a lot of our, our staff are experts in their own discipline but they're not in the teaching and learning mindset or they're not they don't have that that background uh, necessarily and in fairness to them loads of them have undertaken professional learning qualifications but to have this this um, these terms in the general language is something that we're, we're aiming towards <clears throat> and each workshop has these sorts of descriptors associated with it and um, so, excuse me, just while I take some water. What have we done? It comes to the meat and bones of the presentation. What have we done and how is it sustainable? Um, so <clears throat> if we look at our journey so far, and I've broken it down into the first six months, I will confess, I said this to Roisin when she came out there a while ago, we, we were late starting. We, we, we had internal delays. I was moaning earlier on to Terry there saying about we've had staff uh, reductions in our own place but that aside from that aside from us being late starting what we've managed to do is have consistent presence in the early stages and I always compare this to to any project like this any long-term project it's like building a house and the first six months seven months are the foundations it doesn't look like much is done but once you've solid foundations the rest of the house flies up but in this time, and we'd identified in the first six months, we'd identified 14 different deliverables in our work plan to you. And even within those deliverables, there were 17 different teaching and learning events, whether it was teaching groups or, or webinars or workshops and so on. So of the 14, we've missed out on three of those deliverables. And those three I'm very confident in that we will get to in July and possibly stretching into August, depending on logistics. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy with what we've done, our level of participation. And I'll give you one example as recently as last Friday, where our impact has gone beyond our teaching group, beyond our discipline. We had a, a workshop um, on creating content, on creating reusable learning videos and interactive videos. And while we had representation from our three faculties involved in this, while we had people from Lorraine's team, we had people from our, our distance education and indeed our Institute for Education. We also had others. We also, like we had, if memory serves, we had four people relate to the project, which we built this workshop for, but we had another seven people came along anyway, outside of it. So our impact is spreading. What we want to be able to do, and over the next six months, we will be actually having uh, a showcase and a launch of what we're gonna do with the idea of creating what I call course envy, where I want lecture X to sit and say, oh, I see what you've done there, that's brilliant. How do I do that? And that was already starting to materialize in the workshops that we've done. Um, we are uh, building a series of screencasts that started uh, this month, but will be continuing into June. But we're very happy with the progress that we've made, the, the slight caveat being because we started late, the big thing for us, we were meant to do our focus groups much earlier in the, in, the, uh, in the process, but just because of the way the semester runs, if you start semester, there's very little you can do to pull staff out in the middle. So we had to wait until the end of the semester for there. Um, <clears throat> in terms of our sustainability, this is possibly the thing I'm most proud of in our projects. I've worked in numerous projects before, and uh, when you get funding, say for example, to, to uh, buy software, and I've done it myself, we've bought, we had Articulate software or Camtasia or whatever the case may be, and it's brilliant for the staff involved in the project, and they get to use this, they get to learn this software, but next year the license needs to be renewed or the, the product needs to be updated, and only those six or seven people that get the licenses get the benefit of this. So what we've decided to do, and it's hot off the press this morning, but what we've decided to do is modify Moodle instead, right? And the reason why we've decided to do that is because we then benefit the entire university. And albeit we don't create stuff as smooth as, as the commercial products like um, Articulate and, and uh, Adobe Captivate create, but it creates a much more sustainable development. And I said hot off the press because What's happened with, with uh, when you develop this open source software in Moodle, you then can share it with the community. And because of the National Forum funding, I'm delighted to announce that we will have these plugins, which what they're called, will be available to and hopefully injected into core Moodle, which means the entire world can use it, but the plugins will be made, made available regardless to all of the National Forum uh, project partners. 
So that's, that's uh, particularly of benefit to us. I'm very proud of that. The showcasing side of things, we want to create this course envy that I mentioned. We started off in terms of targeting one school, one programme, we're now across three different faculties on two different campuses. So it's very, very sustainable. And the uh, second last thing I want to, or third last thing I want to mention there is the video. Video is everywhere. Video is king in terms of education. And again, in previous projects, we bought this high-end camera. We hired somebody in to do case studies and vi uh, record all these stuff. And then when that person left, or when the funding left, the camera's left sitting in a drawer. So instead, we bought a cheaper camera. We've, we've made it, stuck it on the wall in a room, and we're making it more accessible for not only staff to use to create this video content, but also students to use. So now students can go in, type in their credentials in the uh, device in the room, and when they do the recording, it's automatically sent to their Google Drive, which means they can use it for assessment purposes, or indeed when we want to flip the classroom to make the students create the content. And uh, very last thing I want to say, I'm going to skip sharing our assets because that goes without saying. We will be sharing all of our content. Um, our ultimate aim was not just to, to get to ourselves in our own institution, but is to have, uh, have impact on the professional body of psychology educators. And we're delighted to announce that only yesterday we've submitted an abstract Hopefully, Touchwood will receive approval to run a gamification workshop for all psychology educators across the country at their national symposium later on this year. So that's how I think we are sustainable in what we've done. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Very much.